Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed then please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, you can join the Telegram group. The link is in the description below. The PDFs will be provided in this very group only. Moving to first question now. It says, Ministry of Corporate Affairs has published a draft framework for cross-border insolvency proceedings. Which of the following correctly relates to the current status of IBC as far as the cross-border insolvency proceedings are concerned? So recently, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has launched what or it has introduced what? It has introduced a draft framework. And that very framework basically deals in the cross-border insolvency proceedings. If I talk about the proceedings to be carried out in India, so we have a separate legislation called the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. It deals with all the matters of insolvency and bankruptcy in India. So what is the status of IBC as far as the cross-border insolvency proceedings are concerned? IBC code is insolvency and bankruptcy ki cases in India. Mein. But kya koi insolvency proceeding cross-border honi hai, to wo bhi IBC mein cover hoti hai ki nahi? If not, then uh, what change is needed in that very setup? So kya current status hai IBC ka? Usme kya cheeze nahi cover hoti thi? Jis wajay se Ministry of Corporate Affairs ne ye naya framework draft kiya hai? All that will be discussed today. So what was the existing framework of IBC related to cross-border insolvency proceedings? And what new framework has been suggested by the MCA that will be discussed today. So let's discuss that first and then we'll come back to the question. So MCA has published this framework and it's based on the UNCIT RAL model that is United Nations Commission on International Trade Law model under the IBC. So under IBC only we will introduce a new framework which will deal in the cross-border insolvency proceedings. And this will be based on an international model of UNCITRL. So, a internationally accepted model hai, jo cross model insolvency proceedings mein deal karta hai. So, usko consider karte huye, raisa hi koi type ka ek model, ek framework hum IBC ke under India mein implement karenge. Aisa MCA ne ek proposal draft kiya hai. So, aisa ek framework draft kiya hai. So, if we, before discussing this, what are covered under the cross-border insolvency proceedings. See, if we have some kind of a distressed company within our nation, koi aisi company hai jo insolvency ya bankruptcy ki taraf bar rahi hai, where there are some cases where the companies are not able to repay the debts they are, have taken. So there are distressed companies. In order to deal with the resolution process of such companies, IBC code is there. Okay, so cross-border insolvency proceedings will also de deal with the distressed companies, their re resolution, but it will deal with those companies whose assets and liabilities are across different jurisdictions. So those debtors who have the assets and the creditors who are located overseas, they will be dealt over here. So debtors and credit creditors to alag -alag locations mein hai, overseas, hai, cross-border uh, insolvency proceedings to hai, wo resolve honi hai. basically cross border distress companies ka jo resolution hona hai wo cross border insolvency proceedings ke andar deal kiya jata hai so cross border insolvency proceedings ki agar main baat karu a framework for this allows for location of companies foreign assets identifying the creditors their claims establishing payment towards the claims and coordination between courts in different countries so in proceedings ke andar kya hota hai in proceedings ke andar hum identify karte hain ki kaun si company jo hai wo distress company hai uski location kya hai uske assets kahan pe located hain uske creditors ko identify kiya jata hai aur kya claims hai kya amount company ne pay karna hai kaise un claims ko settle kiya jaye kaise internationally alag alag courts jo hai alag alag countries mein unke beech coordination kiya jaye wo sab in proceedings mein deal kiya jata hai so these proceedings deal with the location of your company's foreign assets, the company which is in a distressed situation, identifying its creditors, their claims, then establishing a way towards uh, through which the payments can be processed. And obviously, there is a need to ensure the coordination between different courts. Why? 
that's because the company the borrower and the lender are located in different countries so the insolvency proceedings will also be held cross border so co- coordination is needed the need for having a robust inter- institutional arrangement to deal with the cross border insolvency issues has gained momentum and there are various nations who are adopting this uncitral model so if i talk about this model it's basically a legal framework that deals with the cross border insolvency issues so ek mo- ye ek aisa model hai jo insolvency issues jo cross border ho rahe hain uske sath deal karta hai and around 49 countries ne isko adopt kiya hua hai around 49 countries including your uk us south africa these have adopted this very model so what are the basic principles on which this model is based ye model ye kehta hai ki agar borrower and lender alag alag nations mein hai to bhi insolvency proceedings ho sakti hai so this model if we talk about some principles of this model they involve direct access to foreign insolvency professionals and foreign creditors to participate in or commence domestic insolvency proceedings against a defaulting debtor so koi foreign ins- insolvency professional hai ya koi foreign creditors hai to wo domestically associated debtors ke against case kar sakte hain ya fir proceedings kar sakte hain insolvency ki uh, taki wo jo unke assets hai unka matter hai wo resolve ho sake so if there are some foreign creditors who have lent loan to some country who is following this model then those international um, cases can also be dealt with as per this model so agar india isko accept karti hai is model ko to koi foreign lender hai jisne india mein lend kiya hua hai wo company unhe repay nahi kar rahi to hum uh, is model ko agar accept karenge to un case mein insolvency proceedings ho sakti hai us foreign creditor ke end mein is indian borrower ke against okay so recognition of foreign proceedings and provision of remedies this model talks about recognizing the foreign proceedings providing the measures for remedy so a lender in one country and a borrower in another country if they are there then also the proceedings can be held the insolvency cases can be dealt with and the remedial actions will be taken cooperation between domestic and foreign courts will be there and between domestic and foreign insolvency practitioners so alag alag countries mein jab borrower aur lender hai to unke ap dusri country ke apne insolvency professionals appoint kiye jayenge then uh, alag alag courts mein cases deal kiya jayega to aapas mein unke beech coordination bhi hogi and coordination between two or more concurrent insolvency proceedings in different countries so these are few principles on which this model is based now we'll discuss about the framework which uh, mc has suggested and it has similar kinds of principles so the framework which has been suggested by m the mca it proposes to make this a system applicable to the corporate debtors and personal guarantors of such debtors so ye jo proposal hai ye kin ke liye hai it is for corporate debtors and for their personal guarantors so corporate debtors or personal guarantors kaun hote hain see debtors are the ones who owe certain debt jinhone kuch debt li hai wo unhe repay karni hai by corporate debtor i mean uh, people who owes debt and in, which include different companies under companies act llp and any other person incorporated with limited liability so ibc court jo hai ye corporate debtor ko kaise define karta hai as a person who owes debt jisme ye teeno categories ke kaise uh, कैटेगरीज के पर्सन आ जाते हैं बेसिकली कंपनीज हो गई जो कोई डेट ओ करती है एल हो गई या कोई और पर्सन जिसकी लिमिटेड लाइबिलिटी है बट आई बी सी कोड हैज केप्ट दी बैंक एंड एन बी एफ सी आउटसाइड दी एम्बेट ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट डेटर सो कॉर्पोरेट डेटर में फाइनेंशियल सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स नहीं इंक्लूडेड है लाइक बैंक एंड एन बी एफ सी हु इज अ पर्सनल गारंटर जो इन डेटर्स की गारंटी दे वो पर्सनल गारंटर है यानी कि एक कोई लेंडर है वो एक पर्सन को लोन लैंड कर रहा है ठीक है अगर ये बोरोवर रीपे नहीं कर पाया तो वो गारंटर जिसने इस बोरोवर की गारंटी दी है वो लेंडर को रीपे करेगा सो दैट पर्सन इज अ पर्सनल गारंटर अ पर्सन और एंटिटी दैट प्रोमिस द पेमेंट ऑफ अनदर पर्सन स्टेट इन केस द लेटर फेल्स टू पे सो इफ दिस बोरोवर फेल्स टू पे द मनी बैक टू द लेंडर देन दिस गारंटर विल पे द मनी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बोरोवर टू द लेंडर आई होप द कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्लियर Now what's the current status in IBC? क्या आई बी सी में जो भी प्रोसीडिंग्स है जैसे किसी फॉरन लेंडर की प्रोसीडिंग्स है इंडियन बॉर्वर के अगेंस्ट या फिर वाइसा वर्सा केस है तो क्या वो आई बी सी में डील किया जाता है 
If I talk about the current status of IBC, the foreign creditors can make claims against a domestic company. So if there is some Indian company, okay, it has borrowed some money from a foreign creditor. Okay, so there is a foreign lender involved, foreign creditor, and this Indian company fails to repay the amount, then under IBC, this foreign creditor can make claims. So foreign country ka koi lender, Indian company ki against IBC ki under amount claim kar sakta hai. But IBC does not allow for recognition of insolvency proceedings in other countries. IBC may India ke under under proceedings ho sakti hai, beyond India kisi or country may nahi ho sakti. So if this new model is accepted or the new framework suggested by MCA is accepted, how it will be useful? It will include the cross-border insolvency chapter in IBC and it will be a major step which will bring law at par with other jurisdictions. Jaise baki countries accept kara hua hai unhone model, waisa ek model India bhi accept karegi agar ye framework implement hota hai. And it is based on including the cross-border insolvency. So, insolvency cases within India nahi, outside India bhi dealt kiye jayenge. It will enable Indian firms to claim their dues from foreign companies while allowing foreign creditors to recover loans from Indian companies. Ab tak IBC mein kya hota tha? Foreign creditors Indian companies se apna paisa recover kar sakte thi. Ab agar ye model jo ya fir naya framework jab implement ho jayega, so, wo Indian firms ko bhi allow karega ki wo foreign company ki against claims kar le sake apne. So, if Indian company has lent some amount to a foreign company and that foreign company fails to repay, then under IBC, those cases can also be dealt as per the new framework which it gets implemented. Okay, so it will bring overseas assets of domestic corporate debtor into consideration of insolvency resolution in India. So, if any Indian borrower has assets in foreign country, then they can also be used to recover money in insolvency proceedings. So, in the two countries, there is no cooperation between the two countries. So, in the two countries, there is no cooperation That is what this new framework says. Okay, now coming back to our question and identifying the Correct statement related to the current status. So current status kya hai? Ki foreign creditors Indian uh, company ki against claim kar sakte hai. That is what the first point says. Second point says Indian firms can claim dues from foreign companies. No. This is suggested by the new framework. Then neither foreign creditors can make claims against domestic companies nor Indian firms against foreign. No. As of now, foreign creditors can make claims against a domestic company. So only first is correct, answer is option A. I hope you have concept gaya. Now moving to the second question. It says, RBI has decided to supersede the board of which company that will become the third NBFC to go, third non-banking finance company to go under insolvency pro procedure after DHFL and SREI group. So recently we discussed about SREI group uh, board being taken over by RBI. Okay, a few days or months back we discussed about it. Now it has decided to supersede the board of another NBFC uh, uh, and go through the insolvency procedure for that company as well. So which company is being talked about? RBI has a company ka board supersede kiya hai. Wo, uh, jo, uh, wo, wo ek NBFC hai, jo ab insolvency procedure ke hu, ke through ho ke guzregi. Isse pehle DHFL wo pehli NBFC thi, jis pe ye decision liya gaya tha. Uske baad recently humne SREI group ke baare mein bhi discuss kiya tha. Aur ab ek aur company ka board RBI ne supersede kar liya hai. Which company am I talking about? It is option D, Reliance Capital Limited. So Reliance Capital Limited ko RBI ne supersede kar liya hai. And this company is soon going to go through the insolvency process. So why RBI did uh, this very thing? Why it superseded the board? And why this company is going to go for insolvency process? Why we execute this company ab insolvency process? Execute karenge? That's because the company defaulted on payments, payment obligations to its creators. Company ne kafi creators ka payment nahi kiya tha. Also, there were serious governance concerns which board was not able to address effectively. Payment obligations were default to kya hi kya company ne. Iske saath saath kuch major governance issues bhi the, jo is company ke board ne address nahi kiye. Jis wale se RBI ko ye board supersede karna pad raha hai aur ye company ab 
इंसॉलवेंसी प्रोसेस के थ्रू जाएगी ताकि जो भी क्रेडिटर्स हैं उनका पैसा उनको वापस मिल सके नाउ दिस कंपनी विल गो टू द इंसॉलवेंसी प्रोसेस सो दैट द क्रेडिटर्स कैन क्लेम बैक देयर अमाउंट सो सेंट्रल बैंक हैज अपॉइंटेड मिस्टर वाई नगेश्वर राव हु वॉज द फॉर्मर बैंक ऑफ महाराष्ट्र डायरेक्टर एंड ही इज द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर ऑफ दिस रिलायंस कैपिटल नाउ ओके अंडर हिम अ सेपरेट ग्रुप हैज ऑल्सो बीन अपॉइंटेड हु आर गोइंग टू असिस्ट हिम इन दिस प्रोसेस आर बी आई हैज ऑल्सो सेट दैट इट विल इनिशिएट द प्रोसेस ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन अंडर आई बी सी सो आई बी सी के अंडर अब इसका रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस कैरीड आउट होगा इनके असेट सेल ऑफ करके रीपे करना है या कंपनी को बैंक आप डिक्लेयर करना है वट एवर इज द थिंग दैट विल बी कैरीड आउट एज पर द नीड्स सेंट्रल बैंक विल ऑल्सो अप्लाई टू एन सी एल टी फॉर अपॉइंटिंग एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर एज द इंसॉलवेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल सो एक आई आर पी अपॉइंट होगा वो पूरा इंसॉलवेंसी प्रोसेस देखेगा ऑल द थिंग्स विल गो एज पर द आई बी सी कोड एंड एज मैंशन इन द क्वेश्चन दिस इज द थर्ड एन बी एफ सी फर्स्ट वॉज बी एच एफ एल देन केम अप एस आर आई ग्रुप एंड नाउ रिलायंस कैपिटल मूविंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ आर बी आई रिसेंटली रिलीज द ड्राफ्ट स्कीम of amalgamation of fraud hit pmc bank and which other bank envisaging the takeover of assets and liabilities of pmc giving greater degree of protection for depositors so we have been discussing about the case of pmc bank that um, rbi is taking various decisions to put restrictions on this bank and protect the rights of the depositors so recently it has introduced the uh, scheme a draft scheme for amalgamating this bank with another bank so which bank is being talked about over here rbi ne uh, kuch time pehle uh, punjab and maharashtra cooperative bank pe kafi restrictions lagayi thi time to time ye restrictions badi thi uske baad ek proposal aaya tha ki ek separate bank set up kiya jayega jo ki AM, ye pmc ko take over karega ya pmc uske sath amalgamate hoga and depositors ka paisa fir repay kiya jayega so which bank has uh, which bank am i talking about with which this pmc is going to amalgamate the answer is option b unity small finance bank so let's discuss a brief about this very case of amalgamation so rbi has released a draft scheme for amalgamation abhi draft scheme aayi hai comments ke basis pe final decision liya jayega okay so it will focus on amalgamating pmc bank with the unity small finance bank unity small finance bank centrum group aur bharat pay ke beech ka ek joint venture hai it's a joint venture between centrum group and bharat pay and it uh, started its operations on 1st of november so recently is the operation start kiye aur ab is thode time baad ye uh, pmc bank aur iska amalgamation hoga it may be seen that unity sfp is being set up with capital of 1100 crore as against 200 crores for the small finance banks now why this is being introduced in order to protect the rights of the investors okay basic not investors basically the depositors jinhone paisa jama kiya hua hai unko dar tha ki unko kaise paisa repay hoga bank to almost fail hone ke point pe hai so unke protection ke liye ye step liya gaya so telling you a brief background about the same In 2019, RBI superseded the board of this bank. So, इस bank में कुछ problems थी जिस वजह से RBI ने इन्हें इसके board को supersede करने का decision लिया था. What were those problems? There were regulatory restrictions imposed by RBI because of certain financial irregularities and hiding and misreporting of loans. So, this bank was involved in various irregularities, had various financial irregularities. इट मिस रिपोर्टेड द लोन कई लोन हाइड किए गए गलत रिपोर्ट किए गए बहुत ज्यादा अमाउंट के लोन एच डी आई एस जो की एक रियल स्टेट डेवलपर है उन्हें दिए थे और उनका प्रॉपर उनको शो नहीं किया गया था बुक्स में सो देर वर लॉट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इेगुलरिटीज एंड मिस रिपोर्टिंग बिकॉज ऑफ विच आर बी आई सुपरसीडेड द बोर्ड आर बी आई प्लेस रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन दिस बैंक एंड दीज रिस्ट्रिक्शन फॉर इंक्रीज सेवरल टाइम्स देन वॉट हैपन वॉज देन यूएस fp promoted by centrum financial services along with resilient innovation private limited was granted by banking license in this so ye do companies ne kaha interest dikhaya tha is bank ko lene ka taki aur isse kya benefit hota hai isse aapke jo depositors hain unka paisa mil jata unko ek milta ki ha bank ab wapas track pe aa raha hai so earlier centrum financial services as promoters along with resilient innovation which is the bharat pay 
they express interest in acquiring PMC through a scheme of amalgamation where new small finance bank was to be set up. This interest protect करने के लिए इसको basically take over करने के लिए एक proposal दिया था Centrum Finance और भारत पे ने कि हम इनको take over करेंगे तो RBI ने approve किया था कि ये एक अलग से small finance bank बना के फिर take over कर सकते हैं So अब RBI ने draft scheme निकाली है उस bank की कि वो कैसे PMC के साथ amalgamate होगा Although वो bank ने operations already 1st November से start कर दिए थे जिसको October में license मिल गया था so RBI had granted the license in October for that small finance bank which was to be set up to take over this PMC. That very bank began its operations on 1st of November and now RBI is coming up with a scheme for amalgamation between these banks. Okay, so this was a brief background. Now under this very scheme, what will happen? The retail depositors will be permitted to withdraw their money but in phased manner in case they don't wish to continue their account with the next entity. अब PMC बैंक अब वो जो PMC बैंक है उसको ये स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक जो यूनिटी स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक है ये टेक ओवर कर लेगा अब ये इसके साथ जब अमेलकमेट हो जाएगी तो हो सकता है ऐसे डिपॉजिटर्स हो जो अब नहीं चाहते यहाँ अपना अकाउंट रखना तो उनका जो पैसा PMC में डिपॉजिट था वो वो उसको विड्रॉ कर सकते हैं लेकिन फेज मैनर में एक साथ उनका अगर सपोज बीस बीस लाख रुपए पड़ा है एक साथ उनको वो पैसा नहीं मिलेगा इट विल बी रिकवर्ड बैक बट इन अ फेज मैनर इफ यू हैव योर मनी विद दिस बैंक इफ यू हैव से ट्वेंटी लाख यू विल नॉट गेट दिस ट्वेंटी लाख इमिजिएटली इट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू यू यू कैन विदड्रॉ इट बैक बट इन अ फेज मैनर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द इंश्योरेंस मनी रिसीव फ्रॉम द डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस एंड क्रेडिट गारंटी कॉरपोरेशन विल बी पे टू द एलिजिबल डिपॉजिटर्स अप टू फाइव लाख सो फाइव लाख तक का अमाउंट जो इंश्योर्ड होता है डी से पहले डिपॉजिटर्स ये अमाउंट रिकवर कर पाएंगे आफ्टर दैट द रिटेल डिपॉजिटर्स विल बी परमिटेड टू विदड्रॉ एडिशनल अमाउंट इन अ फेज मैनर सो कैसे आप पैसा विदड्रॉ कर सकते हो यू कैन देन विदड्रॉ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एट द एंड ऑफ टू ईयर्स वन लाख एट द एंड ऑफ थ्री ईयर्स थ्री लाख एट द एंड ऑफ फोर ईयर्स फाइव पॉइंट फाइव लाख एट द एंड ऑफ फाइव ईयर्स एंड देयर आफ्टर यू विल बी परमिटेड टू विदड्रॉ देयर इंटायर अमाउंट आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स सो पहले दो साल में इतना फिर तीन साल में इतना चार में इतना पांच में इतना और दस साल में फिर आप अपना सारा पैसा विदड्रॉ कर सकते हो सो इमिजिएटली नहीं मिलेगा फेज मैनर में आपको पैसा विदड्रॉ करने का यहाँ पे एक प्रपोजल आया है सो so, it is also said that interest on any interest bearing deposit with the transfer of pmc bank will not accrue after 31st march 2021 so 31st march 2021 ke baad aapko koi interest nahi milega agar aapki koi interest wali deposit thi pmc bank ke sath so these suggestions are uh, uh, provided on the rbi website it's a draft scheme the suggestions are invited and based on that rbi will finally review and take a decision so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much